Spirit of God. All of you online, thank you for joining. You can just type where you're joining from. Tell me you're joining from Ottawa, you're joining from Bulgaria, you're joining from Belgium, you're joining from France. Anyway, you're joining from welcome. And if you want to invite any of your friends to join us online on the physical center, go ahead and tell them that, hey, you can join the service right now. Glory to God. Let's get into this. So today, I'm talking about how to fast and pray for a breakthrough. All of you online, I, I know that you're wondering, can we get to the message? This is it. <laughs> how to fast and pray for a breakthrough. How to fast and pray for a breakthrough. So the first thing is that what is a breakthrough? What is a breakthrough? Let's look at that. So a breakthrough is a sudden, dramatic, and important development. So I know that in, in African culture, everything is breakthrough. <laughs> but when medical science or medical science, the, the word is not a church word. The word is actually a proper word. A breakthrough means that you know, they, for example, there was a time that malaria was not treatable, was not curable. But there was a medical breakthrough. There was a major development and it changed the dynamics. I mean, so when you say there are breakthroughs with coronavirus, that means whatever they're doing right now, there is now a new thing that's changing the game. That's what a breakthrough is. So when we talk about breakthrough, we're talking about we just want to penetrate something really intentional. So question, so why do we fast and what is a fast? So, what is a fast? A fast is abstinence from food for spiritual devotion. Abstinence from food for spiritual devotion. This is why I say it. A fast is um, fasting the flesh to fatten your spirit. So, we're intentionally what? Making the flesh lean that the spirit will gain weight. So, I, want, I just want to get, just go deep. So, what? So, are there different kinds of fast? Of course, there are different kinds of fast. The Bible speaks about Bible speaks about the total fast. What's the total fast? Where people fast without, in fact, the total fast is you fast without food and without water. So how do I know that? In the book of that Ezekiel chapter 4, the Bible says, Esther, sorry, Esther chapter 4, Esther told them, fast without drinking and eating for what? For three days. That's without food. But also, there is a fast where people eat and where people drink, but they don't eat. And what they drink, I believe that they don't drink water. You know, and how do I know that? I believe that that was the fast of Jesus. How do I know? The Bible says after 40 days of Jesus fasting, the first thing that happened was this. Satan came to tempt him not with water. What is it I'm tempting with? If you're fasting for 40 days, water it becomes more important than food. Because, because the truth is that you are dried up. And did you notice when Jesus Christ finished fasting in Luke chapter 4, the Bible says when he finished fasting, the Bible says, and he was hungered. He was hungry. When you stay away from food for a long time, you don't want food again. What you actually want is well, water because the body can do, without, can do without food for a long time but cannot do without water for a long time. So there's a fast with water where you're drinking water. Then there's also the Daniel fast. The Daniel fast is very, it's very huge. The Daniel fast is you even eat. The Bible says Daniel said he ate unpleasant food so in the daniel fast people eat but the food the eating is um is food for energy it's not like nice in the, i've seen someone do the daniel fast before and they eat they boil things like green what do you call it green bananas that's what they boil green bananas it's terrible and in the daniel fast the person i saw do it does not use you don't you don't eat anything that has sugar no pepper no salt it's, you don't eat anything. If you came from the fasting churches, they call it white fasting. So, so I was like, oh, I, I love that kind of fast. I don't like it. I just went to just fast all. Because it, it's, the, the food is really, if you, even if you get to eat rice, it will be such a small quantity and it will be without salt. And you cannot eat the rice with pepper. So there, there are those kinds of fast. There's those kinds of fast. And, and that helps me realize that sometimes people can even fast from things like social media. You know, and all of those things because it's a devotion. So I just want to explain that what the fast is. The second question people ask is it, how long should a fast be? When you read the Bible, you find that people fasted at different lengths. Jesus fasted for 40 days, Daniel 21 days, um, Esther three days, the apostles one day, different times. So fasting doesn't have a specified period, but Matthew lets us know that we must fast often because it says that when you fast. The question now is this. When I fast, when can I break? Have you, are this a good question I'm answering right now? So when I fast, when can I break? Well, in Judges chapter 20 verse 26, the Bible says, you can pull that there, Judges 20 26, the Bible says they fasted till evening. Now, in um, 
First Samuel chapter 7, verse 6, the Bible says they fasted all day. That means the fast did not reach the evening. It ended at about 3 p.m. Because it was a day fast. And the Bible says some people fasted for a number, a large number of days. So, are you, are you getting it right now? Did you put that scripture there? You know, um, please help me again. Judges 20 verse 26. So, for Jesus and for some people, they fasted many days. For some people, so see what the Bible says. Bible says, and they fasted that day until what? I just picked up the middle, the last three sentences. And they fasted that day until evening. That's what, until the eve. So, some, so another scripture said they fasted just during the day. So just giving some foundation to fasting. So I'm going to continue from there. So, you know, I'm going to continue. So, but where I want to stay today is this. Why exactly do we fast? And, and the reason why I'm saying that is that when purpose is unknown, abuse is what inevitable. So there are people that do not fast because they don't understand why they should fast. And there are people that fast but get no result from it because they're like, why am I fasting? I love the people that don't fast because they don't, they don't know why they should fast. Because once they know, they fix it. The people I struggle with are the people that fast and don't know the reason why. Because even to change that belief is bigger. Because they already know the... They already practice it without knowing. So let's read AZK, sorry, Esther chapter 4 in verse 14. Esther chapter 4 verse 14. The Bible says this. Oh wow. And the background of the story is this. There was a man called Haman. Haman was very influential in this kingdom. And for some reason, this other person, Mordecai, who was a Jew, offended Haman. And Haman decided that what I'm going to do is that I'm going to wipe out, I'm going to wipe out all the Jews. Not just all the Jews, I will hang Mordecai. Have you been in an industry and for no reason, someone very powerful in that industry, we're going to come for you. Have you ever been on the project and people just want to stamp you out of it? Have you ever been in an office and they just work all the office politics against you? This was exactly the feeling of Mordecai. And they say, we're not just coming for your job. We're going to take your life. And see what Mordecai... So Mordecai called to, the, to, the, to Esther, a relative, a niece he raised. He said, Esther, they want to kill us. They want to wipe us out of the fintech company. They want to destroy us. There's this woman that wants to chase us out of my marriage. There's this person that wants to destroy the company I've been building. There's this person, I don't know why my mother in law doesn't like me because I've done my best. She just wants me out of the marriage. And Mordecai said, Esther, come and save us. And Esther said, I'm so sorry. Protocol does not allow me to be able to save you. But for, look at what... <laughs> When he said that Mordecai said back to Esther, he said, oh, because you will not be touched by this, you think you're safe. Then all of a sudden, Esther came back to her senses. You need people that when you fall out of your senses can talk to you. Because as human beings, all of us drift. As human beings, you need people that can tell you that you are becoming crazy. Him that can say that you are becoming lukewarm. And see the... So when Mordecai spoke to Esther, see what... Let's see this conversation, verse 14. Verse 14 says, This is Mordecai, when Esther said, I can't, re I, I can, I can't respond. And I, I want to read this again. I've got this powerful. Want to go. Let, I'll, read, I'll read now. It says, And if you all together hold your peace, then shall what? Enlargement. And what? Did he say, If you hold your peace, then we are doomed. Or are we not talking this morning? It says, If you hold your peace, what will happen? He says, then shall what? Enlargement and what? Deliverance. Did you notice he didn't say, if you don't help us, we're finished. Because although God wants to use Esther, if Esther refused to be used, God will raise somebody else. <laughs> I'm saying so because they have single ladies that a broken relationship or broken engagement and because that guy broke up with them they say I'm finished listen to me if you refuse to marry me God will raise up another husband praise God and that will be better than yours 
if the man that refused to give you the 200 millionaire for the business funding he just came up and changed his mind the bank just changed his mind the boss just changed his mind if they refuse i'm not doomed because i wasn't looking up to him in the first place i was looking up to god so if he says no god is the one that opens the door that no man can shut so mordecai says hey if you fold your hands god will come through another way and you need to know that as a child of God that if, you, if, I, if someone shuts the door on me God will open another door so if I lose my job it's not the end of me if I lose the contract it's not the end of me because God will open another door see the Bible says this he says but thou and the father shall be destroyed who knows if you have come to the kingdom and that's the thing See, when we ask you to do something, it's because we sense destiny that this might be the reason why you are here. Not because there's no other person to do it. He says, well, who knows? If you've come to the kingdom, they tell you to start to sell. It's destiny calling. Because if you don't do it, someone else will do it. But who knows? If you have come to the kingdom, for what? For such a time as this. Then, when Esther came back to our senses, I hope you have someone in your life that when you're going when you're growing worldly and carnal and unbelief can speak to you. The Bible says, and Esther bid the return Mordecai this answer. Esther says, go on, go together all the Jews and present in Shushan. He said, fast ye for me. He said, you've given me an assignment. I love the way he said, Esther said, you've given me an assignment. But before I proceed on the assignment, let's take over, let's take care of the spiritual. The first reason why we fast. Fasting is preparatory work for major events. <laughs> what is fasting? Fasting is what? Pe have you seen people that want to do construction before? They'll say, I say have you said beauty? No, we're doing what? Preparatory work. Fasting is preparatory work for major events. The problem with business people is this. When they have a new company idea, instead of them to do preparatory work in fasting, they do the business first. And when it goes wrong, they now come to prayer. The problem with the single is that, hey, before they say and conclude, I want to marry you, instead of them to prepare in fasting and prayer, they do what they uh, and prepare that they do, they say yes. So when their heart is broken, they now come back to fasting and prayer. Because fasting is what? Why do we fast? Fasting is preparation work, sir. Before you go for the before you go for the meeting, you know, <laughs> they say, um, well, I'm going to see. I have an appointment with the GMD of NMPC. I say, oh, that's nice. And he said, no, no, but I know him because he's my uncle's best friend. And they went, I mean, he used to come to our house for NMPC. Day. And you count on all of that and you walk to his office. And what you don't know that before you got to before you came today, he just got a call from the president and they have like squeezed him, abused him, harassed him, and he's so upset. And you still think it's business as usual. So he began to say, you know, sir, and the guy said, Why are you talking like that? Are you okay? He said, ah, sir, it's me. He said, ah, so what? Who are you? Do you feed me? And you are shocked. Like, why are you talking to me like this, sir? And you're not aware that something happened. But if you could fast and pray, maybe a day before that time, the Spirit of God will tell you, it's not a good time to go. What do you do? Postpone. Fasting and prayer is preparation work. Esther said, hey, we're going for high political negotiation. We're going for high political negotiation. Before we go, can they gather and fast? I know you want to relocate, but before you go, can you take some fast and fast and pray? And if you have missed it, there's a good time for you to fast and pray. Oh my God. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. This guy is coming around you, really likes you. And you know, hi, Jerry. You know, the other day we spoke all night. I really feel happy. You know, it's amazing. You send me flowers. Like all those things. This is so amazing. And, and as he's sending you flowers, that's the time to start praying. Because before you ask the question, know your answer. Let me talk to those on the side. Before he asks the question, what? Know your answer. There's a, there's a new contract you want to get into. You want to start a new company. Let, let me show, just show you something. Act, Act chapter 14, verse 23. Act chapter 14, verse 23. Act 14, verse 23. 
the Bible says this. And when they ordained elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to God on whom they believed. Did you see that? The apostle says, even though it's gospel work, before we can send men, they must be fasting and prayer. Ah, if, if they had to fast and pray to send men, how can you start a real estate company and there's no fasting and prayer? How can you say, this is the new objective? The reason why is that fasting and prayer, we are doing grand work. They say, what are you doing? Before we think of strategy, some of you want to go into partnership. Before you go into partnership, I, why? Because fasting and prayer provides you spiritual intelligence. There are things no man can tell you but God. So Esther said, before we even talk about going to see the king, Let's go ahead and fast. Let's go back to Esther chapter 4. I believe that we're in verse 16. Oh, wow. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible says this. Verse 16. Go get together, gather all the Jews that are present in Shushan. Fast here and pray for me. He said, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. Did you see? That's a prolonged fast. He says, I also and my maiden will fast. And I will go unto the king which is not according to law. He says, once I've done what I need to do, I will take steps. That, that's another problem. People fast but don't take steps. No, sir. During the fasting and prayer, be receiving instruction. As soon as we are done, we start taking massive steps towards our goals. Because prayer by itself needs to work by action. He said, we'll do that. So why do we fast? The first reason is this. Because fasting is preparation for major projects. Isn't it amazing that Jesus Christ, if the son that should not fast with Jesus Christ, before he started his worldwide ministry, it took 40 days. He said, I can't just start like that. I can't just start like that. They, they said, be a cell leader. He said, yes, I can talk well. That's not what I'm looking for. Huh? He said, I can't. He said, it took 40 days. This is Jesus. And, and you are going to that deal all you're doing is making phone calls you are talking about that funding thing all you're doing making you want to get married all you're doing said you know if i just have a good dress jesus said i'm here for three and a half years and the first thing he did was to invest 40 days into fasting and prayer because there's something about fasting that prepares you for the future the second thing fasting does is this fasting and prayer Acts chapter 13 verse 2 fasting and prayer brings wisdom and clarity did you notice that as soon as esther finished fasting all of a sudden she knew how to arrange herself see sometimes when you fast and pray there's a way you arrange yourself there's just an arrangement wisdom will come to you you know okay okay okay, okay. this business let me change it this way let me do this let me do that let me do this let me do that just wisdom comes Let's read like, Acts chapter 13 verse 2. Acts chapter 13 verse 2. Oh, this is good. The Bible says, As they ministered to the Lord, they were praying and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Do what? Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for what? Can you please read together with me for what? For the word I've called them. Question, was it when he called them or he had called them before? Can, can you please speak louder? But why is he saying right now? When they fasted, they received clear instructions. Sometimes you are receiving instruction, but it's foggy. Do you know what I'm talking about? You, you, you know, because you're like, why is God speaking to me in a way I can't understand? It's not God speaking. It's the fact that you are so distracted. The instructions are not clear. Are you here, somebody? The instructions are not clear. Listen to me. When you have a radio... And you want to pick a signal. You will pick the signals. Hear the words by again. What do you do? You fine tune. What do you do? You fine tune. What fasting does is fine tuning. Hallelujah. You fine tune. Hallelujah. You fine tune. Hallelujah. You fine tune. Hallelujah. You fine tune. It's so powerful. So you're wondering, um, should I relocate or not relocate? Should I change business or not change business? So you're wondering, who should I marry, this guy or this girl? You're wondering, how should I deal with this immigration issue, this court case? How should I deal with it? As, as you're praying, and you say, you, you feel as if, um, 
maybe I should go this way, maybe I should go that way. And you're wondering, why am I having multiple you know, directions from God? Because you need to fine tune, you need to fine tune. And the reason why most of us don't hear from God is that it's not that God is not speaking, but we're heavily distracted. How do I know that? Jesus Christ says, I am at the door of your heart knocking. What did he say? He says, if any man what? hears he didn't say if any man opens you know why you have to hear first to open the reason why people don't hear is that inside the house just is knocking a lot is going on well there's a lot of pattern you know when i say pattern not like literal pattern but there's just a lot of things work is distracting you strategy is distracting you there's wife yes wife there there's husband there there's children there there's this other money coming there's this other prophet things are going somewhere so sometimes god needs to calm no wonder he says be still and know that i am the lord Where's my friend? Uh, Gerard, will you come? Come, come quickly, Gerard. Bring your phone. Don't, don't, don't come with your phone. Come stand here quickly, Gerard. Increase the volume. Play the drum set. Increase the volume. Play the drum set. Play everything you can play. Everything playable, play. So, Gerard, come stand here, please. Call Laura Alakija for me. hear it ring hold on why can't he hear it ring is it because the phone is not ringing because there's so much noise around he cannot hear it ring what fasting does is to calm down the noise so that you can hear the voice of God ringing that's what fasting does it calms down the noise because the Lord is ringing about your finance but you can't hear it the Lord is ringing about you getting pregnant, but you can't hear. The Lord is ringing about you being healed, you can't hear. See, and once you cannot hear, you cannot pick. Once you cannot hear, you cannot pick. Once you cannot hear, you cannot pick. So, what do I have to do to hear? Reduce the noise. How do I reduce the noise? Fasting keeps the flesh quiet. Thank you, sir. Let me give you a spiritual principle. Fasting keeps the flesh quiet. Whatever strengthens your spirit will work in your flesh. Whatever weakens your flesh will strengthen your spirit. I want to ask you, I know you have this huge challenge, but what has God said? You don't know. Because everything, it's, it's so noisy. You know, you know what the noise, let me give you a noises. Noises is the opinion of other people. The opinion of other people are so strong because you don't know the opinion of God. So, you know what your friends are saying about your marriage. You know what your, you know, you know what everybody, what is God saying to you? You know, you, you know what the CBN rate is and what the policies are and the limitation on business and how Nigerian problems are and what's going on in Canada and US. But what is God saying? And what God is saying is what brings about a breakthrough. No wonder he says, be still, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, be, be still. Because when you're in the place of anxiety and depression, the voice of God seems very far. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah, I saw it. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why I love to stay in the place of worship and prayer. That's why I lost the next level. Because even when they are praying, I'm just listening, Lord. I'm just because there's something about fasting that positions some of you you are just one instruction away from a breakthrough that you are not hearing you are an instruction away from a breakthrough the problem is that you are not hearing you are just one instruction away from the marriage you are just one instruction away from a massive piece of expansion you are just one instruction away from a career breakthrough but you need to hear something and Jesus mother told his disciple he said whatever he says to you do it. He said the secret to the miraculous is that hear what they're saying and do what they're saying. But many of us have allowed so many noises. Noise can be your success. Your success is so loud it's distracting you. Your success is so loud it's distracting you. Your problem is so loud it's distracting you. Fasting gives us opportunity to be quiet how do we become quiet oh wow 
So fasting brings about clarity. Maybe I can add one more. Maybe two more. Maybe one more is fine. What fasting does is this Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. <laughs> Someone will say, you know, I'm a fasting person. I don't know who is a fasting person. Because I'm not a fasting person. I fast because I need to fast. Who doesn't like who doesn't like a cup of ice cream? Who, who doesn't like geese that I'm planting? Praise God. Who, who, who doesn't like mari marinated lamb chops with barbecue sauce? And mashed potatoes to go with it? With very nice gravy? Praise God. Do you feel it? You feel it? Or are you like the one that likes the effort oh, with a sorted? And just very soft bounded. I'm just very soft bounded. Yeah. I don't know who doesn't like it. But what is this that we value destiny over food? <laughs> we value destiny over food. The Bible speaks of a man called Esau. Bible says this. It says, let nobody be a profane person like Esau. Let me tell you something. That, that scripture touched me a lot. It's the book of James. You know why? Because if you read the New Testament very well, I don't know if you have noticed this. The New Testament does not talk about the fault of the Old Testament believers. He, in fact, if only what you read is the New Testament, you will never know that the, all those guys in the Old Testament had problems. He never talked about how Abraham was weak in faith. He never thought how Abraham stumbled. No. Because in the New Testament, all your sins are forgiven. He spoke about Elijah as if he was always full of faith. But Elijah had his downtimes. But what touched me was this. Esau is one of the few people in the New Testament that the Bible referred to his mistake. Do you know as bad as Solomon was, the New Testament does not have the record of Solomon's sins. It referred to his wisdom, but never to his sins. That's why I believe that Esau went to hell. Because I believe that his sin was retained. And that's why the Bible talks about it. He says, he says in James chapter 4, he says in the book of James, he says, he says that be careful that nobody be like Esau, who for a morsel of bread sold his batride. He said, batride, he said, I'm hungry, give me food, I don't care about it. He sold his batride. Do you know how many of you have lost a contract because you couldn't fast? Do you know how many people you were just two steps from meeting that future husband or wife, but it will just take seven days of fasting and you walked away from it? Do you know what your mouth has cost your life to lose? Don't be like Adam. Adam ate his way out of eating. Many people are eating their way out of their testimony. Adam ate his way because of fruits. Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden. Don't be thrown out of the garden just because you can spend time to fast and pray. Matthew chapter 14 verse 19. I hope those of you online are listening to me. Because you have this excuse, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll live in Canada, you know, things are kind of different here. You know, you know, right in Europe, you know, and you give all of yourself these excuses. The same Bible for Africans is for Europeans. Same Bible for Europeans, for Americans, and Australians. God doesn't have double standards. He didn't say, if you fast, Matthew 6 says, when you fast, it's something you have to do. Matthew chapter 19, chapter 14 rather, verse 19. Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. Chapter 17, sorry. Chapter 17, verse 19. The Bible says this, And Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here. And Jesus rebuked the spirit and departed out of him, and the child was killed from the hour. And the disciples came to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? Verse 20 says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. And it says, For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. 
verse 21. He now say, however, when it comes to this faith issue, this kind goeth not, but by fasting and prayer. You know what he was saying? <laughs> he says, there are some cases that need amplification. Are you here? I don't know the kind you carry and what he needs. But Jesus said, this kind does not go. This kind of funding does not come like that. This kind of marriage does not come like that. This kind of breakthrough. He said, this kind does not go. But by fasting and prayer. Someone said, you know, when I eat, I have like all this bob. You will soon have more than bob if you don't fast. What does fasting and prayer do? It amplifies fasting, amplifies prayer. Fasting amplify fasting is a catalyst is a booster is a have you you know have you had a video booster before it boosts everything let me show what i mean where's mrs Ma naomi come quickly can you get this out of the way michael i need your help out of the way completely. This is Naomi. She has a music career. Right now, she does 10 million every year. Our dream is to be over there where she does 250 million per year. And she's doing what she knows to do in the flesh. But now she also wants to pray. So she calls for prayer. So let's call for prayer. Prayer come. Where is prayer? Hey, one of the Soviet can come. Yeah. He calls for prayer. Yeah, no, just one of you should come. Just one of you is fine. One of you is fine. Thank you. She calls for pr prayer. Prayer stay. Just so, so she begins to use prayer. So to move it. So prayer, move it. Oh wow, prayer, prayer, move it. Yeah. Oh wow, it, you, you thought it was that simple? Good. Prayer is moving it, but you can see that the pace is slow. You can see the result is not fast. And she said, "Let me change what I'm doing. Let me engage prayer and fasting. Fasting, come. Fasting, come." Fasting is a bit radical. Prayer. So this is prayer. This is fasting. Fasting. Take your place. Prayer. Take your place. So you, you are the one pushing. So you no, know, no. Yeah, exactly. You're just pushing. All of a sudden, look at that. 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 She has passed a hundred million. Look at that. She's at 180 now. Look at that. Just a little more. Hey! 200 million. Prayer, prayer works but prayer may need what? amplification when things are amplified there's more speed ladies and gentlemen I know you're praying but you need amplification you know they say wake up for NLP you say I'm not a money person <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it's this thing we're talking about no money if you're not careful, you'll soon become a midnight person. Because if you're not a morning person, what will not make you sleep at night will keep you up? They say, for, for example, end up where I got you from Tuesday to Friday. We're having awakening, awakening from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I said, you know, all that is just... So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you can choose to be like you saw. Jesus said, this kind... He said, you know, it's winter, so we, we can't fast. You know, <laughs> you know, one of my friends, one of my close friends said, hey, it's September. Do you have some time? I want to buy you a ticket. Let's go to London. I mean, if we just want to stay for three days, it's okay. And I said, uh, no. He said, why? I said, we're fasting. He said, well, it's, I said, I don't travel when I'm fasting. The reason why is that I can't go to a place and be sightseeing when I should be seeing heaven. Ah, fasting is not what we're sightseeing. <laughs> no, 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 no. We want to see what men don't see. So that we become what men have not become. <laughs> Didn't you hear what Jesus told John? When John was shaking up and down. He said, John, when you went to fast, what did you see? Meaning that you should have seen something in the place of fasting. That when October, November, December comes, you stand like a rock, sir. Wife, if your husband is not fasting, you encourage him. He says the first time, let him fast at 12. You start somewhere. Every morning, 6.30, you get up anywhere you are. It's time for prayers. Because every fasting without prayer is diet. 
So if you fast without praying, you've just done a good keto diet. You've just done intermittent fasting. You've lost weight, but you have not gained spiritual weight. Fasting about gaining spiritual weight, sir. Why? Some things need to move. Some things need to move. Some things need to move. Some things need to become clear. You can't be earning what you are earning five years ago and things, will not, things have to change. Inflation rate has gone crazy. Your faith should go crazy. Look at the things in your family. Who is going to stand the gap? You can wear all manners of desire to cover your problem. Co problems that are covered do not change. It's power that changes status. Are you here somebody? Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, sirs.